Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti. I am MrPhotographer.com. As you probably know, Photoshop can do a lot of different things. One of those things that it can do is it can merge images into a panorama. And you may be wondering, why would I want to use Photoshop to do that? I have Lightroom, I have On One Photo Raw, I have any one of a dozen other programs that work just fine. Well, what I found is sometimes, especially if you're using or you're trying to merge a lot of images, I found that Lightroom and On One Photo Raw, the two um, applications I would use, uh, don't do a good enough job. Recently, I took this uh, nine shot panorama and I tried merging those in Lightroom and I found that between some of the different images where it got merged, there was a bit of fuzziness or jaggedness. I did uh, the same thing with those images in On One Photo Raw 2020 and I found pretty much the same thing. So neither one of those applications uh, did a good enough job, but I did find that Photoshop was able to do it just fine. So if you have a difficult to merge panorama that just isn't working in any other application, try it in Photoshop. You may find that Photoshop will work flawlessly. Now I'm going to show you how to do it. We have Photoshop open as you can see. We're going to go up to the file menu. You're going to go down to automate. And then we're going to go down to the very bottom, Photo Merge. I guess that's what they mean by panorama. Why they couldn't just call it panorama, I'm not sure. But we'll go to Photo Merge. And you have a lot of options here. Uh, first of all, let's get the images into it. To do that, just go over here to Browse. And I mentioned I have them on my desktop. There's nine images. I'll just click on that first one, hold the Shift key down, click on the last one. They're all selected. And we'll click Open. Now you, you see it populated that box in the middle. Now, as far as the options are concerned, on the left you have a lot of different layouts. What I found is that auto works fine every single time, but if you find that auto didn't do a good enough job, do it over and try one of the other um, layouts they have there. Um, I couldn't tell you which one may work best over another, but you'd have to just try them one by one. But I found still that auto has seemed to work every single time. Now at the bottom you have a number of different options. Uh, blend images together, that's what we're doing, so we want that um, checked. Uh, vignette removal, if there's any vignette on the individual images, it may look a little odd when they're merged together, so I'm just I'm gonna click that. Geometric distortion correction, there are lens corrections built into these raw files. It was shot with a uh, Nikon Z6, um, so I'm not going to check that. And content aware, fill transparent areas. Those of you that have done panoramas before know that you'll get some transparent areas around the edges of the image. And you could check that box and Photoshop will use content aware fill to intelligently fill those areas. I suggest you do not check that box because sometimes content aware fill just doesn't work right. And what will happen is if you check that box, you'll get those edges filled and there's not a lot you could do with it. So don't check it, and I'll show you what you could do with those transparent pixels once we're done here. All right, so we have the images loaded. I have my options chosen, and I'm going to click OK. And what you'll see, it will take those nine images, and it will open them up into Photoshop proper, and it will start loading them into the Layers panel. After it loads them in the Layers panel, one on top of the other, it's going to start blending them. And then eventually it's going to play, apply layer masks to each of the images. Uh, so you can see that it's giving us a progress bar, progress uh, dialog box. And you can see it's aligning this layer, aligning that layer, and so on. And we'll just let it do its thing. It, it usually doesn't take very long, although most often you're not going to have nine images. Uh, so nine images, of course, will take a bit longer. So we'll let it do its thing. It's blend selected layers based on content is where it is in progress now. All right, creating seamless composition, and there it is. Okay, so it blended it together and it did a really good job. I don't see any fuzziness or anything along the edges. Now you can see over on the right hand side uh, that it has all those nine images lined up there and it has a bunch of layer masks. And it's basically uh, just masking away, you know, areas of the image it doesn't need to be blended with the image above it, and so on and so on and so on. And then you end up with this. Now I will mention too that these are um, unprocessed raw files. I didn't do anything to the raw files to begin with. And I wanna mention here, um, there's actually kind of a fatal flaw 
with this image? Well, there's probably a number, but there's one thing wrong with this, this scene that I photographed. And I'll tell you at the end, but maybe you could guess what it is. All right. So there's something that's missing, something that's just wrong. And I was wondering, maybe you could figure out what it is. All right. We got these blank pixels. Now we could deal with these. All right. What we need to do is, first of all, kind of merge all these layers together. Now you could just flatten this image. Uh, to that, do that, you would go up to layer and then down to flatten image and it will do it. But what I prefer to do, I like to preserve these layers, is I just put a stamp layer on top. And to do that, it has um, a crazy keyboard shortcut. I call it twister for fingers. Uh, hold down the shift key. And if you have a PC, it's, it's um, alt control E. So shift, alt control E on a PC. On a Mac, it's shift option command E. And then you'll have this stamp layer at the very top. So all these other layers below it now are irrelevant because that stamp layer is up there at the top. Now, to get rid of these blank pixels, what we want to do is get the magic wand tool and just click anywhere on the blank pixels over there. And just make sure that your selection has all the blank pixels. You may not have got all of them if uh, you have uh, contiguous checked and it's touching the edges in a couple different places. It may not have got them all. So you may have to hold the shift key down and click on the areas it didn't get. In this case, it got all with one click. All right. So again, if, if I click over here and let's say it didn't get this lower left hand side, I'd have to hold the shift key down and click over there. All right. So we have everything selected. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go to edit and we're going to go to content aware fill. Okay, right here. And I have it set to auto mode. And you can see that it's in green showing where it's going to sample. And if you look over on the right, you can see a preview of what it will look like. And actually, it looks great. So I'm just going to click OK. All right. And then it still has our selection there. You can see those marching ants. So to get rid of that, hit Commander Control D. D for deselect. And it got rid of them. All right. So. We have these nine raw files merged together. Now, as I mentioned, I didn't process this at all. So what I would probably do next is I would go to filter, uh, camera raw filter, and then I just process it as though I was in Lightroom, but I'm in camera raw. So I guess I'd open up the shadows, bring in the highlights a little bit. I'd get a white point and just bear with me. I'll let you think about it. Now, what is, what is wrong with this image? There's really some majorly major issue in my in my opinion uh, with this image. Bring that up. Bring that up. Okay. And blue, make the dark the blue sky a little darker. Go to saturation. I'll make oranges up, up, up. Like that. It's uh D -D -D -D. let's just go to effects and wrap this up. And we'll go to vignetting and a tiny vignette like that. We'll click uh, OK. So we'll get out of camera raw and go back. All right. There is our image. It kind of is reminiscent. Uh, those of you that are old enough to remember Windows XP, uh, the default wallpaper in Windows XP was an image called Bliss. And actually, that image was quite famous because um, it really had the same issue this image has. The photographer, his name was Charles O'Rear, that took that image. And if you're not familiar with it, just Google Windows XP desktop photo Bliss. It was called Bliss. Um, he took this image with film. It was back in the days of film with a Mamiya. He had the same camera, same Mamiya camera I had, as a matter of fact. And he took, uh, he took this image in California, this Bliss image. And um, Microsoft saw it, and they wanted it to make, they wanted to make it the default wallpaper for Windows XP. And he actually sold it to them. He signed an NDA, so he couldn't say how much. But it has uh, come out that it's been a low six figures. So uh, over $100,000 uh, he sold this image for. Uh, they wanted him to ship it to Seattle. And none of the carriers, like FedEx or UPS, would accept the image because it was worth low six figures. So Microsoft bought him a plane ticket and had him fly the image to Seattle so he could get his check and sign the papers 
he he gave them the image. He sold all rights to the image to to Microsoft. Uh, but that kind of proves that an image could have a fatal flaw, and it could still be worth something. Well, I don't expect Microsoft to be uh, knocking on my door for this image, but have you guessed what the fatal flaw is with this image? There's no focal point. Um, it's a nice pastoral scene. The clouds are nice. The grass is nice. The trees are nice. But there's nothing here for a viewer to lock their eye on. Even if it had a bird flying through the sky, that would help. Uh, preferably, you'd probably like something in the lower third or the upper third of the image. Um, maybe a dog, maybe a person would be great. Um, studies have shown, actually, that if you have a person in a scene such as this, and that person is wearing red <laughs> for some reason, it's the way our monkey brains kind of work, uh, that would be very, more appealing than if it was a person wearing yellow or purple or something like that. Um, so it needs a focal point. It needs something for someone to kind of rest their eyes on after they look at everything else where they settle their eyes on. So um, I will go back to this scene someday. And at the very least, I'll put my camera on a tripod on a timer and I will walk into the scene myself. Um, but I'd actually prefer to have something more interesting than me in there. Um, so um, maybe a dog or something uh, would be cool. Or maybe something just that doesn't belong there, like you wouldn't think would belong there, maybe like a cat or something like that. So anyway, I've blabbed enough. That's how you do panoramas in Photoshop. It's a good thing to know. It's not something I don't think you'll do every day, especially if you own Lightroom or Android, Photo Raw or any other application that will do panoramas because with those applications, you could merge panoramas probably much faster and easier. But sometimes it just doesn't work and you'll find that Photoshop will work. Thank you, everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon. <laughs>